In this video, we're going to learn how to use the Lightburn software to engrave and cut a design using the Atomstack laser cutter. Start by opening the Lightburn software on your computer. When it loads up, if you've set it up previously, which I have, you'll see that you have in the middle of the screen a 400 by 400 millimeter canvas. The origin point where the laser starts, the, the home position for the laser, is in the bottom left-hand corner where you see the green and red squares overlapping. That's the origin position for the laser. And if you look up the y-axis, you can see that extends all the way to 400 millimeters. And the x-axis also extends to 400 millimeters. This means that the material that you engrave on your canvas cannot be larger than 400 by 400 millimeters because that's the maximum size the laser cutter can handle. Now you can, if you look to the left of the screen, you can use these drawing tools to draw a design using the Lightburn software itself. But it's probably easier if you just use Adobe Illustrator to create an SVG file for use with the software. If you've created a design, which I have, if you created a design earlier, you can simply open it up by clicking the folder in the top left hand of the screen, open, or going to file, open. Both will lead to the file open dialog box. Now, if I navigate to my desktop, you can see that some of the files are grayed out and all the folders are the only things I can click. That's because right now, all I can access are Lightburn project files. So I need to change from Lightburn files to all supported. Click all supported and you'll see that many more files become um, available. They're no longer grayed out. I can see my file that I created earlier on, laser cut face. If I click on that once and then click open, the design will open up on the screen and you can see it's been placed in the middle of the canvas. So if you have a large 400 by 400 piece of material like wood or acrylic, and you started to engrave, it would engrave right in the middle of the canvas. And you may not want that. You may want to reposition your design. You can do that by clicking on the arrow icon in the top left-hand side of the screen, that's the selection tool, and dragging a box around your design. Then by clicking and holding, you can move the design around the canvas. So if I wanted to place it in the bottom left-hand side near the origin point of the laser, um, I could move it into position, let go of the mouse or trackpad button, and that's where the design um, will now be engraved. Now you can see in the top right hand side under cuts and layers, and if you don't see this screen, it might be because you have one of the other options selected. Make sure you've clicked on the cuts and layers button in the panel on the far right. And you can see now I've got um, three different layers. I've got the black layer, which is the mouth of my design. I've got the blue layer, which is the eyes of my design. And then the red layer, which is the outer edge of the design, the, the face, if you will. Um, I can select each one of these individually by just clicking on them. And each time I click on one, I can change the different options uh, for the speed of the laser, the, the laser power, and the number of times it will go over that outline with the laser. And that's referred to as the pass count. So if I want to um, go over the mouth um, multiple times, I can change that by clicking the up and down arrows. So I'll have four passes over that. I'll leave the speed set to 60 millimeters a second. Um, and I will, um, 60 millimeters a minute, sorry and I will change the power to 20 because I don't want to use um, too powerful of a laser power because I want a very light colored engraving for that. Um, if I click on the blue, I can then change the number of passes for the eyes. So I could change that to five passes. Um, I can change the speed if I want and I can turn the power up for a darker engraving. Now, depending on the material you use, if you're using wood, wood comes in different densities. So the speed and the power uh, will affect how deeply the laser can engrave, how dark the lines will appear, and how many passes you might require to cut through the material. And with different materials, different woods, it can be trial and error. So you'll have to experiment beforehand. Um, 
So I'll change the uh, power for the uh, blue eyes on my face design to 50% power. And then because I want to cut the face itself out, the red line is going to be a cutting line. It's not going to be an engraving. So I'm going to turn that to 70% power um, and I'm going to have a total of 12 passes and I'll leave the speed as it is. So obviously, once it cuts once, it's going to burn through the wood to a certain depth with that 70% power. And then it will pass over that same outline again and it will do that 12 times and hopefully that will have cut through the material. If it doesn't, um, you might need to um, run that cut again. Um, but it's a good idea, like I said, to experiment beforehand so you know how many passes are needed to get through the material that you're using. When you're ready and you've set up the different powers and speeds and pass counts for each um, of the different uh, lines in your, um, in your design, you need to start to uh, cut the file with the laser cutter. Now, if you look towards the bottom right hand of the screen under the laser panel, you can see right now the laser is disconnected. You need to make sure that you haven't turned the laser on before you open Lightburn. Open Lightburn first. And then when you've done that, you can turn the laser on, which I'm doing now, and you'll hear the noise from the laser fan in the background. So I've just turned the laser on, but you can see the laser is still saying it's disconnected. And if I hit start, it will say there was a problem with the machine. That's because I haven't selected the correct device. If you look towards the very bottom right hand of the screen under devices, there's a drop down list that currently says cu.wlan-debug. If you click on this menu, go to the USB serial option because I've connected the laser cutter to my computer via the USB port. So click on the USB option and you can see now it's detected the laser cutter and the laser cutter is now ready. All I need to do now in order to start my engraving and cutting is to click the start button. I'm not going to click that just yet um, because I need to put some material under the laser. But as soon as you're ready, click start and it will send the information to the laser cutter and begin your engraving. Once you've set up the laser cutter with the material in place, it's a good idea before you click on the start button to click home just to make sure that the laser is definitely in the starting position. Once you've done that, you're ready to hit the start button and the laser will begin engraving. So I'll click start now. You can see that under the laser panel, it says the laser is busy and it's counting up and the progress bar is moving to show you how much time is left on the engraving. When the engraving is finished, the laser will return to the home position, the progress bar will disappear, and you'll see the laser is ready to go again with the next design. Remember to always make sure you're using the laser cutter in a well-ventilated area. Windows and doors open preferably, or hopefully there's a fan that you can turn on that will extract the fumes that are created by the laser cutter. Also remember, always use eye protection when using the laser cutter. If there are no safety glasses available, and these safety glasses are especially made for use with laser cutters, do not use the laser cutter. Once you've finished engraving and cutting your design, you can simply turn off the laser cutter by pressing the power button and then closing down the Lightburn software and returning to any other apps that you need to use.